Welcome to the Film of Steins, the podcast where we discuss all things movies. Join us as we dive deep into the latest releases, revisit classic films, and explore the art of cinema. Whether you're a film fanatic or just love a good flick, we've got you covered. From Hollywood blockbusters to indie gems, we'll be breaking down the storytelling, cinematography, and everything in between. So grab some popcorn, sit back, and get ready for some cinematic magic. If you like what you hear, please consider subscribing to our Patreon at patreon.com slash We offer tiers at the $1, $5, and $20 level where the $5 tier would grant the ability to request films for future episodes. This is the Film of Steins, where movies are more than just entertainment, they're an experience. They're an experience. And welcome back to another episode of the Film of Steins. Thanks for joining us today. I'm joined today by my app-using friend, Lucy. Hello, everyone. Have you been downloading apps? Of course. Today? I download apps every day. All right. Well, I'm glad you could be here today, so you can stop using your app so much. <laughs> All right. I'll put the I'll put the apps down. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to have you here today, so we could discuss this fun movie. But before that, you can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for brand new episodes of the Filmasteins. Go check out our great exclusive episodes, like our coverage of the One Piece Netflix's One Piece adaptation, season one, of course. Landscape with Invisible Hand, Talk to Me, Isle of Dogs. But today we are discussing the very anticipated film where I counted down the seconds. <laughs> nope, try again. <laughs> countdown. Justin Deck Countdown. He doesn't have a wiki-, wiki page. That's fine. I saw that. But that's, you know, that does say something, right? Yes, yes. Indicates a endingness, right? Maybe. But yeah, the 2019 film, yep. Countdown. We saw this in theaters. We did. While, a while back, not recently. God, no <laughs> one's re-releasing this. <laughs> yeah, when it came out, we saw this in theaters. So that's that's a that's a that's a thing that happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the week before, the week after, too, we saw Crawl. I'm pretty sure that happened. I don't know if I'm just making that up but sure this kind of happened back to back it may not be fair to ask but did you or did you not like the movie did you like the movie yes you like this movie you have fun with this movie okay did i like the movie i think you didn't like the movie but you didn't hate it you would you know obviously you would watch it again would you watch it a third time i don't think you would unless you kind of were put in a situation where you had to. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. Yeah, this movie is surprising in a couple ways. I guess first and foremost, I want to say that since we talked about it with Insidious and how kind of family friendly it is, this film kind of starts to fit that bill too. We have a lot of, it's very family friendly, not a lot of cussing, I don't remember, and no gore. I would say that yes. It doesn't have a lot of gore. It doesn't have a lot of cussing, but there were, I guess I'm just thinking of one scene where I thought it was a little like not super family friendly. And that's when she like grabs him when she's trying to like seduce him to get him to go into the uh, corridor. And like, they just like pan down into like his man parts and she grabs him. But I don't think we see her grab him. She reaches her hand, and I don't know if we saw it or not that it's implied that she stuck it down his pants. I don't know, but some that that right there just made it like just a tiny bit less family friendly compared to Insidious. That yeah, there's nothing sexual, at nothing all. sexual. Yeah. yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, we saw it was a why it was a like how would you call it like a tall portrait shot. Oh. It was a cowboy shot of their profiles, and she was like looking at him, and yeah, we, she didn't. We didn't see him. We didn't see her grab him. I don't think. Yeah, and he just made a face like, a, "Whoa, yeah, what you doing?" Yeah. So that's a good point, and I guess the there is that scene where that ghost boy is in the bathroom and his feet go backwards. So that's kind of like that's kind of graphic. That's hella graphic. But, but it's not the you know it's not like. But there's no blood. No blood or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fair. That's fair. Not quite there, but that is kind of at the forefront of my mind with horror films now because I'm just thinking, hmm, there. It feels like that's pretty rare. 
Yeah, so one thing I don't like about this film, or not really about this film, but the Wikipedia page for the film, <laughs> is it calls it a supernatural horror film. Why can't we just adopt the film techno horror and and then the ubiquitous sense techno horror? That's fine. Is that not working for some folks? I don't know. I don't hear it used either. Not is that it? I read a bunch of stuff about movies, to be fair, but can we just start adopting it? We should. Maybe, maybe tech horror, because techno is like the music and i would just think where is my music here you know but that's <laughs> that's just me but yeah tech horror digital horror now i like tech tech horror i'm also not for making it too specific either well a film like this is that's but know. a film like this <laughs> yes yes yeah man so give me some high level thoughts on this film i will say i'm not Obviously not a fan of this film. You know, there's not there's nothing happening here for me. It's a fun film for people who want the cheapest of scares. But other than that, it's it's junk food, you know? It's a junk food movie. Just say it respectfully, right? Yeah. I actually enjoy this film, but it's more on that side. It's more on the guilty pleasure junk food movie. I would definitely watch this again. I would maybe watch this again you know, near Halloween times, we're watching, we're binging scary movies. I would. It has the jump scares that I like, but this movie is also not going to keep me up at night. It's it's not scary. It's not creepy. I'm not going to, you know, scream. I'm not going to stay up. I'm not going to need, you know, someone to go with me to the bathroom because I'm scared. But it does have the jump scares. And, you know, just one or two really creepy scenes that I quite enjoy, like the little boy twisting his feet around. Oh, that was that was good. But that's it. It's just a guilty pleasure movie. It is by no means a great cinematic, beautiful thing here. This is the kind of movie where if you like it, there there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of other horror movies that are just like this. And you know, and just junkiness, and you'll that, which is good. You know, if you, if you're not this, I say this in the most positive way possible. If you like these films, your bar is set so low that you have a lot to appreciate. You know, and that's I have more power to you. You know, it's definitely one of those situations. But, but I also have a guilty pleasure for watching bad movies that are on you know this kind of level that have this kind of money and production and talent behind it. You know, not. Not Bunny Man bad, or not that stupid ass coffee bean movie that your brother likes bad on YouTube. Which one? I don't. It's about a coffee bean, and I think he's a cop, and it's just it's. I don't know if it's supposed to be the shittiest thing ever made, but it sh it really is. This is the same brother that watched, and I think likes Velociraptor. Velocipaster. Veloc yeah. What? That's what I meant to say. That's what my mind was thinking. <laughs> yes, that one. I think I showed him that too. Oh, uh, no. Or he, or he kind of, I think, he, I don't know. But yes. So my favorite part of this movie was, I'm gonna, let me say this. Can you guess my favorite part of the movie? Or f favorite thing? So is the priest. Yeah. That is listening to like, I don't know, what what kind of music, Screamo? I don't know what kind of music he yeah, was he listening was to. Yeah, he was just a cool priest. That's interesting. The one that helped him. Yeah. Or tried to. Why? Why? Just because he's got he's he's a little out of place. Okay. He's he definitely is the only character or actor in the whole movie who I felt like had fun, with the exception of the, I guess him and the guy who was running the video store or the the phone store. Yeah. I thought he I thought he did a pretty fine job, and uh, just but other than that, I didn't feel like anyone even wanted to fucking show up on these days to work. Our main character is terrible. She's just. She's not the kind of bad where you're just like, oh my god, you shouldn't be an actor. But she's just like the kind of bad that, oh my god, like... Can you have some energy here? Can you pretend like you want to be here? Yes, but it, it almost feels like... It almost feels like it's... She's the a great example of what it looks like when a director doesn't know what they're doing. You know, she's like a... She's really good at facilitating that in my mind. She's not a shitty actor. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't. I don't think, and I haven't seen enough of her. I don't think. You know where she's from? Where? You. She's Beck. Oh my God! Yes. That's why she looked familiar. Yes. Oh. Okay. She's great as Beck. Yes. Yeah. 
So I mean, I mean, I have no doubt that it's you know Justin Deck is at fault here with um you know some of the shortcomings of this movie. It's not a movie made for me though. I will say you know it's just it's this movie is not for me. This movie is for me, children and you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll take it. I'm a child at heart. Sure. That's fine. That's fine. You know, this is this is a very serviceable and it knows what kind of movie it is. I mean, for God's sake, we start off with, I mean, the premise, just the premise of downloading the app, this app that tells you that you're going to, you know, when you're going to die and that you're kind of signing up for a brutal death when you violate when the... you violate the user agreement. Yeah. And that's when you sign up for the brutal death because you're supposed to, have, you know, it does. It's an accurate measurement and it's you know you think more people would be interested in this actually if that's if that's true <laughs> you know we need to get to the bottom of this the priest was not my favorite because he was out of place and the um video store guy i think his name is derek not video store the phone store whatever it was phone repair guy yeah they were out of place and it's almost like if they would have gone with their vibe you could have had this it would have been comedic. a completely different movie. <laughs> yeah, 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 this yeah. comedic horror film, which could have done well too, but it, it it was a bit over the place. And you throw this weird kind of B-plot with the sexual harassment stuff, and I, I get you need someone to be your bad guy here because you're going to use him as your... Um, That's where we landed with. That setup was all just for... To try to trick or to try to... Outsmart the demon. To outsmart the demon, yeah. And it's like, okay, all right. Uh, I don't like it, but I'll go with it. I don't know if I want to call it a B-plot. Could you still call it a B-plot even though he's used? Yeah, usually your B-plot somehow is... intersects with your normal plot, okay. your main plot. But it's not a huge B-plot. We just have like two instances of it. Yeah, this is that that would be the B-plot here though, yeah. Okay. It's It's also simultaneously kind of the MacGuffin. Yeah, your McMuffin. Your McMuffin for the end, at least. I guess the McGuffin here is literally the app because it's uh, everything circles around the app, which is the definition I think of a uh, high concept film is when you can identify that. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Speaking of which, I hate the usage of high concept and low concept. Just in you know, kind of worldwide conversation, it's just totally misused. I don't like it. It's misused. Yeah, yeah, I just ignore you when you say it. I'm just kidding. It's weird. When people have said it in real life, I'm just like, but that movie's not a high concept. Or that movie is not low concept. They try to use it like it's a derogatory yeah. thing. So they they kind of stick with the low means bad and high means good? Uh, low means using? simple, high means complicated. But that's how they're using it? That's how they're using it. Okay. That's wrong. Because I know you've told me before that what you think like that, just flip it. Yeah. I wish we could correct that because I feel like there's actually a, a useful, that's a useful stop in criticism or, you know, just kind of point building, narrative building in a in a conversation. And it's just totally misused because a lot of people will use it as something derogatory too, which neither are, neither are. But I do think it's kind of fun to maybe argue over the point because there's a spectrum of it of course right yeah and when you can identify the plot point it starts to build that picture out of what a high concept and low concept film can look like and so you know as you but in general something something where the film revolves around a very particular thing like an app mm -hmm. it's obviously high concept but when you have a couple characters going through just domestic life what is the movie going around? Life? You know, that's a pretty complicated <laughs> idea, right? So yeah. it's it's all of a sudden starts to be hard to identify exactly what it could be going through because it's ultimately revolving around the character. That's what a low concept film is all about is just character. And okay. that can come in, you know, billions of ways. Yeah. Just like low concept can. You only hear the, the proper usage of high concept when it's applied to comedy films, which I think is very weird. That is weird. Because... It's a high concept comedy film when it revolves around basically a, an overarching joke, and you know, a lot, you know, just ah, huh, interesting. Whatever film comes to mind, you can. It's, it probably is high concept. <laughs> like, uh, I guess the one that comes to mind for me is Forty Year Old Version. It's very high concept. It just revolves about him being a forty year old. Yeah, and trying to, and then him trying to get laid. Trying to get laid, but then he kind of falls in love, and Aww. yeah, so. 
I've never seen that. But you can have several McMuffins in your film, right? Yeah, you generally should. You should have as many McMuffins as you can because they're good for you. Because <laughs> <laughs> there should be many things. A, Mc, a McGuffin is defined by some kind of catalyst that's moving the film forward, right? Right. And some are more obvious than others, and the best ones are ones that are, you know, have been there all along, and then they play out in such a way that they're important, more important mm-hmm. than that they may have first seemed. So there should be several, right? You shouldn't just be one, like the app. Well, there's no should, you know, everything has the right to exist, of course, and, you know, can be oh. fun one way or the other, but there are often just one or two or a bunch, I think. Talking about the McMuffins kind of starts to reveal what high concept and low concept are. Yeah, okay. So. All right. And it's just, it's kind of a pet peeve, I guess, of mine. Not really. I don't really care. I'm just like, it makes me, it makes me feel a little crazy. Like I'm being gaslit or something. Like, or, you know, <laughs> by just the world. Oh, I get you. That kind of thing. So I'm just like, am I? And then I just do a simple Google research and, or a, a simple Google search. And I, I guess it is a research, actually. <laughs> I've you looked at it more than one time. <laughs> You know? That's funny. And then I am like, oh, no, I'm just you even being drew, bamboozled a little bit here. You even drew a hypothesis. You're like, <laughs> all right, but, but back to the film. Back to this down to the count film. <laughs> I did like that one part that you just mentioned about the kid in the stall. I liked how he walked through the walls yes i like that too that was fun i think the whole bathroom scene is probably the best in this film yeah yeah because you you start out with him walking into the stall and you i think you said it which you know i can't relate to this but you said why is he going to go pee in the stall that that was funny but we need him to go in the stall i guess although would it have been creepier if he's at the urinal i don't know but then we see the kid walk through, and you're like, holy shit, what? And then I think he's laughing or something, and we hear him, and that itself is creepy. Of course, the lights go off, and you know shit's about to go down. He starts contorting his body, his legs, or his feet start moving the other way. I am not okay with this. <laughs> I think I think the first time we watched this at the movie theater, I covered my eyes. Oh, my God. It was before my, uh, my build-up my uh, horror movie build up yeah now the exorcist is a comedy to you <laughs> <laughs> and you fall asleep to insidious dude i fell asleep to what were you watching that one time hereditary and i woke up when someone was screaming or is it the conjuring it was one of those and one of the moms was screaming <laughs> and i just fell back asleep and covered my eyes because it was creepy as fuck but um yeah, no, the first time I watched that, I covered my eyes because it was just too much for me. And then, you know, he runs out and then end of one of the coolest scenes in this film. But I like what you said about kind of making this or it having some comedic aspects that could have made this a comedic film and maybe played more along with the user agreement thing because that that's the funny part here, right? Or the... That's what facilitates the horror movie. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, no one, well, that no one reads the user agreements to anything. Yeah, maybe there's a, a so <laughs> we're there's an actual die. commentary yeah, there. You know, so maybe if you were to play that up like that. Yeah. All of a sudden, it's maybe not so high concept. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, that's funny. I like that. Yeah, my very favorite part of the movie, which was actually pretty interesting, and it just, it's a, it's a, it's low hanging fruit for me. And, you know, of course, a, blo- a broken clock is right twice a day kind of thing where the second priest, the priest that tries to help and, and does other than her friend, the guy that was in the bathroom stall, Matt, he, yeah, he uh, still gets kind of doesn't hurt. It doesn't really work for him. The salt circle. But when he's kind of given them a history lesson on the demon that's after him, that's not really after anyone i guess it's it's a question of it brings up a, it brings up the question of determinism and fate of course too yeah which is 
which is very cool. But um, again, that's the second time a broken a broken clock is right twice a day. Don't forget that you're gonna always find good things in twos, <laughs> like the prime numbers. Like, they come in like, twins. But I like the showing her the book and stuff and kind of he, he had the scroll and it was in the shape of the countdown digits and everything that's and funny. i was like that is that's that's cute if we could have if we could have embraced that a little more it probably would have been a little funnier and sillier but that that i don't know if that was a would have been a bad thing you know yeah and it's almost like this film didn't know what its message was trying to be either because i don't think there was a message well you have the you know kind of subtle never or read the user agreement that's just a haha man that is and then nothing there <laughs> you have the okay, you said it in the beginning which was i don't know if i thought about it like that that you die or the demon comes and gets you when you break the user agreement which yeah it does and i didn't think about it but it does but Very then final destination yeah that's a good way of putting that putting it but then you have this weird thing where if you're guilty of something the demon comes and gets you because uh matt here was guilty that he stole the toy from his little brother and then the two sisters quinn and jordan were guilty that they sent the mom off to find jordan or to find Quinn wherever she was, and she got hit by a drunk driver. I didn't know what that was about. Yeah, I think that was trying to indicate a little bit of internal conflict for just the simplicity of depth with these characters. All right, we have a director slash writer who is not a storyteller, you know, proper. He's not a Aaron Aronofsky or whatever with the whale or something. Although I guess he had source material, but he's trying to fill out his his character sheet as minimalist as possible just to give a little bit of humanity i guess to these characters and i i mean i guess he does does he enough that you i mean enough that you enjoyed it right or did that did those particular would you think this film would have been a little bit more successful if we just packed off of that entirely these guys were just meat bags to get killed or save the day yeah i think so or maybe if it would have been either get rid of it completely or more of it because okay matt saw his brother so the half step is not an answer yes is it ever i don't know i think it's case by case basis but okay matt saw his brother and um quinn and jordan saw the mom but quinn also saw the guy at the hospital the boyfriend she saw him dead on her bed i think at one point and i'm like okay so do you just see any anybody that's died recently and has given you issues is this post or pre breaking the user agreement because the girl basically breaks it immediately right what about the guy i don't remember what matt was supposed to be doing but i think they almost they all break it almost immediately so maybe that's why they're kind of being tormented but matt's only being tormented by his brother and so is Jordan. She's only being tormented by the mom. Well, I guess that we know of. They didn't really sit down and talk about who's tormenting <laughs> who, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know. We just, I just know that she saw him like almost immediately, and the boyfriend was only being tormented by his girlfriend, the the girl that got killed right in the beginning that was at the party. Yeah. So I don't know. It's just weird that Quinn here was seeing multiple people, and then there was also. Well, I guess it was just a hand, but it was supposed to be like Matt's hand around her. Yeah, the demon was really just fucking with them, wasn't she? Wasn't <laughs> he? he was like, these guys are in a movie. I'm going to be part of this. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'll make it up <laughs> as I go along. That's probably the best spooky part. I wouldn't say scare, but like chilling part is when the hand is, which is low hanging fruit, but when she's in the bed and the hand comes over her, that's probably the most chilling part. I think that's why I enjoy this film, despite the other bad parts of it i i like the bathroom scene i like that creepy hand around her scene that's very creepy i like when the sister shut the door and then she turns around and then it's back open again i like the demon <laughs> i don't think he looks he's cool bad yeah, yeah he looks no, he pretty looks cool. cool so 
there's enough for me here. I like that Matt dies. It's short. I really do. It's a quick movie. It is a quick movie. Quick I do movie. like that Matt dies too a lot. I think like, that's a pretty ballsy move for this yes. kind of movie. I wasn't, you know, sold again on the forced romance here because it seemed pretty forced and pretty fast. It's a, it was kind of situational romance. <laughs> I like. I do kind of like the, the the comedic element of that, but it they didn't own it. Yes. Maybe if they wouldn't have made them kiss before he dies. Yeah. But then that's also funny that they killed him off and they were already so like into each other. Because, you know, they're both getting chased by demons. How how can you not connect with that? How can you not fall in love if demons are getting you? That's true. But and, but yeah, very ballsy move. I love that they kill him off. So, you know, there's there's enough here. I like the priest, too. He just didn't fit with the movie. I like that he was eating the Jesus crackers. Yes, that was hilarious. And that he had a, cro- a cross tattoo on his back or something. Oh, yeah. I think funny. it said Jesus in it. Did it? For- <laughs> I think so. Yeah, that was cute. And like I liked how like hazy his office was and all the books and stuff and had a, had a real mood to it. Yeah, it, it had a vibe. There were some parts that either I didn't get or I didn't like or just kind of frustrated me. Oh? Like Matt's backstory about him stealing that toy from his brother. That's weird. You know, it's... It's not like Quinn's and Jordan's that they lied to their mom and it got her killed by a drunk driver. I mean, that's that's something. But Matt just stole his little boy, his little brother's toy because his brother had cancer or he was sick and was getting attention. Like, I don't know that I, that didn't sell me like the girl's story. Yeah, it was a weird little backstory. Yeah, I totally agree. So, okay, you know, pick pick one. Either make it lame and funny like Matt or go to Jordan and Quinn's kind of more meaty backstory on why they feel guilty as fuck. I didn't like that she take his she took his phone. She took um uh, I don't know the boy the boyfriend's name, the one that was in the hospital, and that's how they met and that's how she found out about the app. I don't like that she stole his phone after like for, can you even do that? That was weird, yeah. That was weird. Why did she steal the phone? She just needed to get an app or needed to see that that was his girlfriend? I don't know. But that was just weird that she stole his phone. And I guess the last thing I didn't like was that when she was filling out her paperwork for work, I don't know who she called, but they were like, yeah, you just need your birth certificate. And I'm like, you don't need your birth certificate. But that that was just that was just a picky thing for me, I guess. You know, no one no one brings their birth certificate for the I nine process. No one, absolutely no one. And then she had to call somebody to ask for that. Dude, they give you a sheet of paper that says bring one thing from column A, or two things from column B, and or C. And your birth certificate is the last thing you bring. Just saying. That was just me, though. That's funny. Justin Dex never had a real job. Exactly. (laughs) He's only been a filmmaker. That's what I'm (laughs) fucking saying. I've had, you know, I I haven't had a lot of jobs, but I know the I-9 process. That's funny. (laughs) (laughs) And over here in Troll Hunter, we have whole fucking, like, quality documentation to... Docu- you know, to document all these fucking troll incidents. It's just like, what? <laughs> That's funny. They have probably a better I-9 process, a better pro- uh, hiring process. What did you think about the sound that app made? That little screaming thing? Yeah, it was like a weird monster laugh or something. Yeah. It was whatever. It was... I didn't like that it did it randomly. Yeah, I didn't like that either. There was no consistency was, in it. Yeah, yeah. you couldn't no kind of predict it. Because mm-hmm. they could have really played with that a little better. And, you know, I probably just use it when you break the user agreement. And then that's it. So two or three times throughout the whole movie. Three or four times, I guess. To, yeah. With each character. One, once with each character. And then we're in the clear, but we hear it several times to, like, notify her. But... And then at the end, we could have had a final little monster laugh. And then she's like, what the fuck is this? And, you know, then it's yeah. the update. You're like, oh, shit. Genius. Yeah. That could have helped build some of the suspense. But yes. no one fucking told Justin. Dang. Justin, you hearing this? <laughs> it's, free, uh, it's free advice. Free. 
Right here. You can pay me like twenty dollars an hour. I'll dude, just subscribe. Dude, subscribe yes. five dollars a month. Exactly. We're good. I'll give you all the free advice. I'll give you all the advice the you tips, could want. Tips and tricks. Yeah. But um, yeah, I I like the sound it made. It was pretty creepy, but I did not like the inconsistency of when it rung. It sounded like a Halloween decoration sound. Yeah. And that's yeah, what it, it sounded did. like, which was, which is fine, which is fine. I, yeah, I guess I just didn't like the usage of it because mm-hmm. it felt so inconsistent. And, yes. Yeah, I, that's an easy fix. I just fixed it. <laughs> Damn, Justin. <laughs> To be fair, that was probably his sound guys editing and stuff. It's probably them. And he wasn't like, "Why are you guys?" He can't watch everything, you know. It's it's a big it's a big deal, you know. It's a big production, even this. <laughs> mm-hmm. But still, the buck does stop with Justin at the end of the day. Yeah, who are we talking about here? Yeah. Justin's movie. Justin's movie. It's got it going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to wrap it up here, I guess. How did you feel about the ending? About her, I guess, basically killing herself and then writing the word Narcan on her shoulder for her little sister to bring her back to life. (laughs) Because it's it's almost one of those things you like, but almost. It is the movification of of an eye roll. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm he, saying? Here I am thinking, clever girl. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's not the it's really not the worst thing in the world to say that, right? Because eye rolls come out of people being maybe a little too clever for their own good too. Okay. You know what I mean? But it does kinda facilitate that eye roll in me. I'm just like, oh my god. It's cause it's not quite to the point where I'm like, gag me. Not quite there. Okay. But, you know, we're in that we're in that ballpark. So it's it's whatever. I liked the end end better. Where she got the update and it was like countdown two point oh has yes. been downloaded. I'm just like, okay, that's that's fun. And I know I know everybody fucking has a problem with sequel setups and stuff like that, but that's a gag me fucking mega <laughs> eye roll. Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, let people have fun. I don't care how much I dislike a film. Let people have fun with it, right? Yes. I'm glad there's as how many bunny mans are there? Five, ten, fifteen. I'm not even sure. I hope they keep coming out if they want to keep making them. Yeah. I'm not gonna watch them, but I might. Uh, I I liked it. I I liked that because it, it was clever. <laughs> it happened, and she like rolled over and then the vial fell over or something it's just like oh my god that's you know so the the execution of it is also kind of what builds the eye roll i was it was it's fine though it's it's fun it's it's a little too smart for the film to be honest well and this is why i thought you would like it a little more than you apparently do because she saw that when that girl had overdosed and they rushed her into the hospital. And that's where she learned about Narcan. That's where she learned to bring someone back to life. So it's one of those things that like ties back into the end. Mm-hmm. You know, I guess it wasn't, you know, title and complete ending, but. Well, Justin took a filmmaking 101 class, I see. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, it's... But yeah, I mean, that's a good point. It is a good point. That's, that's, that is at the very least decent filmmaking. No doubt she about learned. decent storytelling. Yes. So I'll I, give them that. I like I liked it. I thought it was clever. I thought it was funny. It had so. to play a role, you know. And, yeah. And is it an eye rolly thing to try to outsmart a demon that's been doing this for arguably probably, or I should say that a demon that's been doing this for potentially thousands and thousands of years? How is it going to get outsmarted by this random ass fucking nurse? <laughs> Out of all the people in the world, all the people he's fucked up and ruined, you know, this random chick's gonna outsmart him. All right. Hey. We wouldn't have a movie <laughs> if it didn't happen. Look, you can be the one. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And I guess maybe it's presumptuous to say that she's the only one. But it looked like he was killed. I don't know. Because now we have 2.0. The 2.0, you're right. So he's just been kind of paused. Like Voldemort. Like Voldemort. He's hiding somewhere. He's Yeah, he became like powerless a... and now he's got to regain his yes. power. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Had to be reborn. That's cute. No, it's it's fine. 
I highly recommend this for anyone who is a scaredy cat and has a hard time with real horror movies. This is kind of a nice, it's a nice baby step. That was me. I will say, I think it's a solid movie in that in that way. It's not a storytelling movie. It's not you know nothing to tell mama about. You know, don't br- don't bring this one home to mama. You know what I'm saying? I brought this home to mama <laughs> when I watched it. <laughs> so how'd you feel about the poster? The posters, minus the fucking paragraph on it, it's... What paragraph? It says death. There's an app for that. I Countdown like that. in theaters. There's probably another poster. But with, but with the hand and all and the, the phone, that's that's cute. That's fine. I'm cool with that. I like I don't, that. I don't it, hate that. I like it. I like that it says death. Mm-hmm. There's an app for that. This is funny. It's funny. But is that, a, is that even a thing... People have ever said something. You say something blank. There's an app for that. That that's a WordPress thing. You'll be like, you'll say something blank. There's a plugin for that. That's like I think they had an ad campaign all around that. Like they can't just rip them off. Why not? I mean, they can. That's fine. Which care. is why you should have made this a little bit more comedic. Yeah, that's true. They have the most impressive parts of the movie are the comedic parts, yes. and so just kind of. Has a little bit more connected tissue there. I mean, to be honest, the poster might be the best part of the movie. (laughs) Which is saying a lot, to be fair, right? Posters suck. Well, that's true. That's true. You know what I mean? That's true. This poster could have easily sucked, but it it doesn't. It's it's all right. I like it. I like that the I like that the zero is. I was just about to say that. Red. Yeah, I I like that. The end. Clever. Zero. Nice. That's cute. Good job. (laughs) Justin's team, you got a one point. I'm really surprised a sequel hasn't come out yet and hasn't been announced or anything. Yeah, based on the very few um, reviews I read, this was not a very well-received movie, which saddens me because it's not that bad. It's not, yeah, compared to a lot of stuff, it's really just right there with it, you know? Yeah, it didn't deserve the... The new Indiana Jones made $400 million. Holy fuck. And, I mean, first of all, it's the fifth fucking Indiana Jones movie. Why why do we have five of those? We've only got one of these? Things are not equal in the world, I tell you. That's that's fucking true. (laughs) This movie made a lot of money, though, so there's no excuse for there not to be a sequel. I don't care how bad the reception was. Maybe Justin couldn't handle the... uh the heat he got fucking rich and he was like all right <laughs> Done. i'm out yeah but don't people always not always but don't people just take over other people's projects like this a, a lot of times yeah yeah you know even like the harry potter films look how they fucked those up with a different director yeah warner brothers did not quite understand what to do with those and they still came out better than all the marvel movies damn <laughs> back to marvel <laughs> Back no, to but episode one. <laughs> not, no, that's totally true. A lot of times, directors will do like the first two or first. A lot of times, the first two, and then kind of back out. It's a little surprising because we we saw a little bit of money here happen. They may be a little worried about how expensive it might get, and it wasn't. Uh, it didn't break a hundred million dollars, so maybe they're not like mm, we. We don't know if we can tap into the insidious thing or not. You know, so maybe something to do with that. I also think it helped. That it came out around Halloween time. That's true. That's true. You know, Christmas movie. If you're going to release a Christmas movie around Christmas time, you're going to see a spike. Probably. Or any kind of maybe summery movie around summertime. I bet there's a little spike. Or a horror movie around Halloween. Yeah. Or maybe a family movie around Thanksgiving. (laughs) Yeah. So maybe that... Contributed. Or a, a labor movie around Labor Day. No, I don't think so. Oh. That's not going to be a spike, you dummy. <laughs> we can watch Schindler's List on Labor Day. What is Schindl- Schindler's? <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? I don't think that's okay. <laughs> I don't think we should do that. You ready for my budget guess, though? Yeah, tell me your budget guess. I had no idea. Let yeah. me start there. But, you know, they classified it as horror. So I went <laughs> on the lower side. Or I think it's the lower side. I went ten million, just because of the actors we had here. I went a little higher than normal. You know, they're not the greatest actors, but I've seen them in previous stuff. Yeah, 
but as far as the main chick, I guess she was in a Netflix movie. And as we know, they don't pay their actors anything. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, no, you're you're quite a bit off base here. Actually, it's six point five million. It's almost hitting, almost hitting oh, double. Shit. Yeah, which it. I mean, I'm there with you. You just it's so hard to know with these these lower end movies. And it was a theatric release, so I, I I guess maybe that's what bumped it up a little on the higher side for a horror film. But, alright, six. It's a little expensive, I would think, for this kind of film. I would have pegged this as probably more of like a two million. Damn. I guess they got... Because it's pretty low-key. There's not a lot of sets. There's not a lot of crazy movement, really, at all. There's a few car scenes... We revisit the same parking lot like three times. Mm-hmm. We're we're in. There there are a handful of them though. We do have quite a few. We probably like seven or eight different different locations. I would imagine they probably built some of that out then, like the hospital, abandoned hospital area and mm-hmm. stuff, all that, and the lead up to that, those two or three rooms before that. I or would I would imagine that was all built out then. But I, I don't know. I can't fucking know anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it went on to make $48 million. Holy shit. So it made a lot of money for, for what it is, no doubt. And hopefully Justin did benefit off of that because, goddamn, I don't care how bad it is and you managed to swindle people like that. That's good for him. <laughs> He's not swindling <laughs> nobody. <laughs> swindled me. He swindled me. No. Yeah. He didn't swindle me. He swindled you. <laughs> no, I was happy to see that movie for the first time. Good, good, good. And I'm I'm happy to watch it with anyone who wants to watch it because you know it's, you know I like it when I like watching movies with people who also like watching movies. You know, even if I'm not into that one and they're into that one, you know it helps the vibe kind of mellows out and yeah. I'm into it. Yeah, for sure. I wasn't falling asleep or anything. I don't. Was I falling asleep? Did I say it was? No. Oh, okay. Not this one. I have a game for you today, if you're ready. What's the game? Today we have just question game. I don't know what you call it yet besides question game. Q&A. Q&A. If this countdown app existed, yes. would you download it? Yes. Why did you not watch the movie? So I think they made a fake app for when they were doing pre-screenings for this. And they told everybody in the audience to download, before the movie started, to download the app. Oh, heck no. Isn't that fun? I guess if it's before the movie, I would download the app and I'd be just laughing <laughs> and downloading the app and shit and then watch the movie and I'd like, my, my stomach would probably drop. So. How immersive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know. I, I might. I don't know. I might. I wouldn't. Because I'd rather no. know how I die. See, that is kind of a funny thing. I don't know. I probably would. Yeah, but you don't know if it's real or not. Not like it. it it's kind of like you're in the situation where um the girl was in the beginning, where she was at a party, and they're like, "Oh, you should download it." Would you like then in a situation like that? You know, you know, ne- you've never heard of this. It's just like a ha ha. This is an app that tells you when you're gonna die. Would you download it then? I don't know. It's a lot of work to just download something. You know. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, look it up and hit download and. Hope to God my fucking dad is working and And then God forbid it asks you to create an account. Yeah, I'm not fucking creating an account. And verifying your email. Yeah. I'm not going through all the hoops. All right. Well I wouldn't. So just know that for sure. That's like almost in the same vein as the hand. I'm definitely touching the hand. Or a Ouija board. No, I'm definitely touching the Ouija board. Nah. 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 That's weird because I have one right here. (gasps) All right, next question. Did you ever steal anything from a kid like Matt did here with his sibling? Um, Like when I was little, little like that? Yeah, about his age. I think he said he was like about nine when this happened. I've accidentally taken <gasps> some stuff. I can only remember one thing, but I took a game and I, I just, I never brought it back. I forgot. Okay. So I guess I was borrowing it and then I, I just kept it. <laughs> It was an accident. Yeah. <laughs> that that was me with my sister's clothes. <laughs> All right. What Teen Nick show would you like to have been a part of? What Teen Nick? Like what? What are those? Drake and Josh? Yeah, like Drake and Josh, 
Victoria's, Zoe 101, Big Time Rush, mm. some of the cartoon ones. The cartoon ones like what? Like Chalk Zone. That was Teen Nick. All Grown Up, Unfabulous. I don't know what that is. You didn't watch Unfabulous with Emma Roberts? I think that was her name. Emma Roberts? Was it a, ne- a Teen Nick show? Yes. Huh. That's That's the point of this question. Matt here is was in Unfabulous. <laughs> That's why I don't understand why this question came That's up. That's hilarious. Oh, it's an easy one. I'd be in Victorious, though. Victorious? Yeah. Why? And don't they go to, like, an art school? Yeah. That'd be cool. Oh. Yeah, hang out with artsy people. Artsy-fartsy people. That's funny. I wouldn't. <laughs> why not? I don't know. They look lame as fuck. They look like the only not lame ones. That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know which one I'd pick. I guess Sam and Cat would be fine. That'd be my second pick, probably. Oh, I'd probably do, well, no, that's lame too. I was going to say Ned's Declassified, but yeah. nah, nah. I'd probably go to Drake and Josh. At least they'd make me laugh. But that's funny. I thought you would get my question. <laughs> I was like, uh, this is strange. Why are you asking me this? Because that's where I know that guy from. from. That's where I know Matt from. Who else is an unfabulous? I've never heard of that show. Just Emma Roberts. What? Okay. You, I'm sure you've heard of that show. It was early 2000s. All right. Last question. How would you approach a situation where your boss sexually harassed you? Unlike Beck here. Beck. That's funny. That's her name and you. Unlike Quinn here, <laughs> who did an her awful Quinn? job. Here? I think so. Isn't that... Also naming you? Yes. That's funny. I think that's Love's last name. That's a weird connection. How would I approach that situation? Yeah, she didn't even try. She tried, I guess, to tell her manager or her supervisor. But dude, that was You have to make a scene. (laughs) If you're not going to fucking participate, you've got to make a scene. Because you don't want things to go against you. You know what I mean? Yes. You just have to. You have to. There's just no way around it. And so I would have to... Start screaming? I I mean, I'd have to... Hit yourself a little bit? No, I'd just... I'd have to knock him on the ground and fight him and do whatever I can and, you know, go out the room and scream and try to get some police in there and you gotta make a scene. You gotta make a scene. I like that. I like that. What about the people that, like, freeze in situations? I know it's a response, but you've... You've got to get out of it, man. You If you freeze for a split second, it is what it is, but you've got to get out of it. If you know you're a freezer, you've got to work on that in some <laughs> way. I don't know how. I'm sure there are some techniques that you know you can learn about and take classes on or something, You know, but you've got to combat that. It's just like if you have an eating disorder, you need to learn how to navigate around that. You know, that's, that's a problem. That is a problem. Yeah. That's a survival of the fittest problem yes. well, it's actually just a survival problem i guess just not fittest but well, if you do it enough if your generation does it enough then it is a fittest yeah. problem <laughs> all right yeah i like that i like that you know at least go to hr at least if you're not gonna if your manager your supervisor didn't respond because like when she ran out of there and she tried to tell the lady mm-hmm. her boss or whoever that was is probably the nurse w- number one or whoever yeah 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 and that guy came out after and is trying to pull her away. That's when you fucking scream and say, no, you yes. know, I need to talk to you right now kind of thing. You make a, you make a scene there. Yeah, you you're know? like, no, come here because he touched me and I need to tell you about yeah. it. Scream it out. Because that lawsuit's happening. Yep. You're going to make that lawsuit happen. Yep. Good. Good. I like your answer. That, yeah. That's it. Sue the shit out of him. Exactly. Then use him as your McMuffin. He should, he should probably be like an eye for an eye thing. Be raped. all right and that's the end of the episode (laughs) (laughs) you're killing me all right well teach their own what do they say an eye for an eye makes the world blind oh do they say that that makes sense yeah yeah no eye for eye here i can't remember who said that i don't know because the eye for an eye thing comes from hammurabi's code i don't know if you know that Mm -mm. so it's an old law old so it's wait it was actual it was an actual law Mm -hmm. hammurabi's hammurabi's code was a uh 
set of laws. Where, where, when? Um, I want to say like six to eight thousand years ago in Istanbul, Turkey area, sure. where the first societies kind of were mm-hmm. formed. Were the first? I should not say societies. Maybe. Well, yeah, I guess literally societies with a a sense of judicial system like and rules. and rules and and a sense of like ownership over very specific things and everything. That's where all those rules started popping up about like if you look at my daughter, you can have her, you know, <laughs> for half price or something, you know, kind of thing. What? Yeah, it's crazy. We did the. We should we have to those. pull up yeah. some of those co- some of the rules, man. They're pretty nuts, That's you know. Funny. Or one would be like, if you rape my daughter, you have to pay her weight in shickles, or give me your firstborn son, Damn. some shit like that. <laughs> Glad I wasn't born then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> shit like that is crazy. That's hilarious. Or one would be like, if you try to wed a a daughter who's already had sex, you have to pay the other family. And, you know, and 20 chickens or something. Damn. Yeah, it's fucking, it's, it's pretty wild. It's funny. I like that. There's a lot of really kind of progressive thoughts involved in, in all that, though. If we know for the time, they're, but they're, they're funny now, but they, you know, they kind of, it's a really interesting kind of old example of what, you know, moral system looks like. That's funny. <laughs> That's not biblical, you know, that it's very, very uh, grounded in reality. So I think, I think it's very cool, too, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, thank you for watching this film with me. Thank you for re-watching this film with me. Thank you guys for listening to this episode of The Film of Steins. I hope you guys had a fun time. Hope you were entertained in some capacity, right? Yeah. Or learned something, God forbid. <gasps> what? You learned? I learned a little something. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for brand new episodes of The Film of Steins. Please come by our Patreon. Drop us a dollar. If everyone in the world gave us a dollar, we would be very rich. <laughs> <laughs> but until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's a wrap for today's episode of The Film of Steins. Thanks for tuning in and joining us on our cinematic journey. We hope you enjoyed our discussion and gained some new insights and perspectives on the world of movies. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on your favorite platform, especially Patreon at patreon.com slash filmofsteins, and follow us on social media for more film-related content. We love hearing from our listeners, so if you have any feedback, suggestions, movie recommendations, or book recommendations, please feel free to reach out to us. Until next time, keep watching, keep loving the magic of movies. This is the Film of Steins signing off.